kids don't have any filters. It, the way they look at reality is like completely different. And that's the first half of the book. That said, sort of stemming off of the children's questions, I think my favorite one is, what is the grossest thing about being a veterinarian? What is the <laughs> grossest thing? Well, I could write a book. I'm sure all my colleagues can write a whole book on the grossest things. And that was a, that was a good question. Things like um, maggots and abscesses, um, what else, other, other things, uh, bones sticking out, anal glands, those are pretty gross. Do you talk to the animals? Did you talk to the animals when you took care of them? And what were some of the things you'd say? Well, first of all, I didn't get any uh, people coming and taking me away in a straitjacket. So that's, uh, that was a benefit. Um, yes, I always talk to my animals, my pets. Uh, it helped to relax the pet and it also helped to relax the owners. You, as, as you know, when you go to the vet, you're very nervous. You're nervous because your dog or cat's there and you're wondering what the vet's gonna do and you're worried about the money you're, and all these things. So when they came in, a lot of my clients I knew personally, so we started talk, started talking to the client, but then when I got the dog or cat on the table, I would start talking to them. I said, okay, now Fifi, take a deep breath. Okay, well, let me check your eyes. Okay, let me, you know, let me see what's going on with your fur. So I'd be talking to them and that basically kept the dog quiet, calm, but also kept the clients quiet. They felt relaxed. You're treating the pet and the person. It sounds Absolutely. Like. So the whole gestalt of the, uh, of the exam. I want to kind of really quickly run through some of these questions in here because a lot of these sort of stood out to me. One of them being a question about rabies. Can you get rabies from a dead animal? The rabies virus is sensitive to heat. So if you see a dead animal at the side of the road and it's in the summer, the rabies virus will pretty much be dead. If you see it in, um, in the wintertime, then it's possible for the rabies to, to survive in a dead animal for a little while. So my, my uh, word of caution is if you see any kind of dead animal, wild or domestic, don't touch it. Use a stick or, or a shovel, something like that. So it's, it's a hot, cold thing. So it's possible in cold weather, you can theoretically have a rabies virus in the body. This is, this is kind of a loaded question, but it seems like every year there are different stories that come out about what's toxic for your dog, what's not toxic, what's toxic to cats. Um, is there sort of a, a quick list you could sort of run through on some household toxins that we wouldn't normally think about? Right. Uh, some misconceptions. Poinsettias, which is Christmas time coming up, they said it's, they're very toxic. Well, they're only mildly harmful. So I'll still keep them away from animals and children, but they won't kill an animal. Uh, greenies. Greenies was, was a favorite treat. A long time ago, it used to be choking animals, that sort of thing. Well, they reformulated them, so greenies aren't as toxic as as they say. I took more thing, I took more uh, rubber toys out of dogs' intestines than raw. I never took a raw hide out of a dog's intestines ever, and everyone thinks that they're the biggest problem. They aren't. Swiffer, the Swiffer, you know, the cleaning. Um, the the product in there has a. It sounds like antifreeze, propylene glycol but it's a propylene glycol derivative, so it's not, it's not antifreeze. So that's a misconception. And of course, um, one of the things that people think that they give their dog salt to vomit in case there's a, uh, they, they ate something wrong, well, that can cause kidney problems and death. So you wanna use hydrogen peroxide instead of salt. Another question was, what do you do when your dog has a heart attack? Can you do CPR on an animal? Well, I have my emotional support dog back here. Uh, he also doubles as a doorstop. With a, with a dog that you think has heart attack, it may just be collapsed. It may not be a heart attack. It may be something in the throat, and it may be suffocating. If it's safe, you want to examine the throat. Uh, first thing is you want to get into the vet, but in the meantime, check the throat, make sure there's nothing in there. But if it's a small dog, you can see this, you just you wrap your arm around the chest just behind the, uh, the elbow and then press quickly like that, chest compressions. With a large dog, you, lean, you put them on the side like that and then chest compressions like that, very quick, okay? Don't, don't do anything in the mouth because that's too dangerous. 